Today is Monday, November 16th, and this is a post-market review for the stock market activities today. What do we have? Another day, another vaccine pump on Monday, an overnight pump to begin with, but then followed up with a vaccine pump. And when retail traders don't pick the action during the trading hours, what do they do? They pump the indices higher during the last hour of the day and tomorrow they'll gap it again higher overnight and it goes on and on until they achieve their goal it is the same playbook from last week and what is their goal you might ask who knows but they're trying to send a message who are they the quote-unquote mysterious entity that has been pumping the market overnight since elections day and my guess here is that their goal is to reach dow 30k now reaching 30,000 for the dow will create headlines all over the place you'll be sitting watching your local news or your evening news and you will hear the dow reaches 30,000 for the first time and you'll start seeing average people becoming retail investors when they hear Dow reaching 30,000. Meanwhile, the economic picture in reality is getting worse and worse. You will see people saying, oh honey, look at that. The Dow is at 30,000. Maybe we should put some money in the stock market. And what do you know? Once these morons join the market and become retail traders because they've heard that the Dow reached 30,000. All of a sudden their neighbors are making money and their friends and relatives have been making money throughout the rally in the stock market. Now the new entrants join the market. And what happens? They dump on their heads, thus becoming bag holders. We've seen this movie before, but this is the objective in my opinion. Now, please stick around for the conclusion of the video because we will discuss how to deal and trade the market during this time. Any mistake and you will pay a very heavy price for it. If you short prematurely, thinking that the market is too hot and it needs to reverse now, your timing might not be correct, even though your theory is, and you will end up losing money. So I'm going to go over again on my three conditions for the reversal of the market. I will explain them again in details, and I will give you a guideline on what to do during this time. With that being said, we do have a market to cover. And here we go. The Dow Industrial Average closing in the green by 470.63 points or a gain of 1.60%. The Nasdaq, the laggard of the day, however, closing in the green as well by 94.84 points or a gain of 0.80%. The S&P 500 closing in the green 41.76 or a gain of 1.16%. And here is the sector's performance for today. Energy once again leading the pack and capturing the gold medal. Industrials for the second place and the silver medal. Meanwhile, financials closing at number three and capturing the bronze. What lagged the day? Healthcare, the only sector closing in the red. And we see communication services and consumer cyclicals also lagging. However, both managed to close in the green. And now, moving on to the futures market performance. Another big day for crude oil, vaccine headlines, pump crude, you know the deal. Today was a vaccine day, no doubt about it. And you do see the impact, not just in the stock market, but also in the futures market. Softs, we see coca closing above 3% for the day. Massive day for coca. Cotton muted. And look at our friend OJ climbing higher for the day. And remember, since we made the call to buy OJ at around 110, you see OJ futures climbing all the way to 125 today. This was a very, very successful trade. I continue to maintain my position in OJ. But look at coffee. Coffee leading the day in softs. Massive gains with over 5.5%. Lumbar, sugar, big day, big gains, closing in the green as well. What's going on with metals? Defensive metals, gold, silver, muted, 
during a risk on day. Meanwhile, cyclical metals that react to reopening and economic expansion such as platinum and copper closing well in the green. What about meats? Muted day, but we see gains of more than 2% for live cattle. Grains, muted day across the entire grains futures. <laughs> Moving on to the big casino, the options market, and let's see what's going on. Apple, the most active name of the day with 1.1 million contracts, about 70% of those were calls. Neo at number two, with about 780,000 contracts, about 61% of those were calls. And check out this name, Boeing at number three, with a little over 600,000 contracts, about 71% of those were calls. Tesla lagging behind at the bottom of the table. We've seen Tesla being muted, lagging any activities, whether it is in the stock market or the options market. However, after hours, we do have the news that Tesla is joining the S&P 500 and the name is popping. Last time I checked, 10% or so. We will cover the chart of Tesla during the charts analysis and give you an update on what the S&P 500 inclusion mean for the name. But before we do that, let's cover some interesting trades in the options market today, starting with rocket companies. And they are buying the 24 calls expiring on December 4th. And this was a major bet with over 20,000 contracts open today. We see another call here for Aflac, AFL, buying the 47 and a half calls expiring this week. This is a little bit of a wild shot. Somebody's buying the calls for five cents a piece, hoping to double, triple them. If the name manages to rally three, four, five percent tomorrow, you could double or triple your investment here. But it is a wild shot. But the volume is notable. We see another call here for TSM Taiwan. We've seen this theme last week of bullish bets, massive bullish bets for Taiwan. And we see the name trading up over 8% today, outperforming the entire semiconductor sector. But if you've been watching this channel, the movement in Taiwan is not a surprise for you because we've seen massive bullish bets for this name and now all they're doing is they're rolling higher buying the 110 expiration date december 4th another interesting trade here for uber buying the 55 calls expecting a gain of over 11 percent by expiration date december 4th and here is the star of the day moderna and this trade caught some eyes today buying the 90 puts expiring this friday making a bearish bet that the name will give up all the gains from today and decline eight percent or so by friday and this was on big volume as well over eight thousand contracts for this particular trade now understand that this person who opened the trade and i was watching live it was over seven thousand contracts in the same time moderna doesn't need to decline eight percent if it declines two to three percent tomorrow that's all what this trader needs to turn this trade into a profitable one and at the bottom of the table you see general motors they're also fading the pop in gm buying the 39 puts expiring december 4th and here are some more interesting trades for you you see macy's l brands nordstrom all the apparel retail names been rallying significantly due to the vaccine news but what do we see here we see them fading the pop at least for these particular trades number one for macy's buying the seven puts expiring on december 18th and this is for an expectation of a decline of over 12 percent similar story for l brands they're buying the 31 puts expiring by friday with expectation that the name will decline over 10 percent you see similar bearish bets against all of these reopening names lyft melco resorts the casinos so it is very interesting that some traders are not buying the pops from this week and last week here is another interesting trade for twitter buying the 40 puts expiring december 4th next week with expectation that the name would decline over five and a half percent but we do see 
a trade here for Walmart, which is reporting earnings this week, and we see them doing a put spread, buying the 143 puts and selling the 142 puts. All in all, the trade is costing this particular trader about seven cents. And the expectations here for seven cents entry price and a maximum gain of one buck per option, the probability for this trade to become profitable is very, very high if we do see a decline in Walmart. Again, you see a lot of trading styles here from traders in the options market. Some people make big bets, others look for profit within the margin of pennies such as this particular trade in Walmart. And here we see another trade from Moderna. This time it is a bullish one, buying the 110 calls expiring by the end of the week. However, the volume for this trade is less than half of the volume of the bearish trade. Lastly, we see at the bottom of the table a call for Baidu, buying the 160 calls expiring next week with expectation that the name will gain over 8% by expiration date. Baidu reported earnings after the bell and last time I checked it is down 1% or so but it is too early to say whether this trade will be profitable or not. And now moving on to the headlines that shape the day. And the first and most important headline is for Moderna. This is not a surprise. We've been expecting the results from Moderna's trial to come out imminently and we saw massive bets last week expecting the results to come out on Friday perhaps the results were ready on Friday but it was more financially incentive for certain players to release the results on Monday instead and the surprising factor here is that Moderna's vaccine according to Moderna of course is more effective than Pfizer and they're giving us the number of 94% effectiveness here. This number was behind the market rally today. If Moderna released their vaccine trial results and they were 85% effective, you wouldn't have seen the pump in the market to the same magnitude that we've seen it today. And by the way, we've been talking about the short attention span of the Robin Hoodies and the traders in the market these days. Last week, they stampeded to buy Pfizer. Today, we do have a new shiny object called Moderna. They're dumping Pfizer. We saw Pfizer down over 2% and then piling into Moderna instead. Next week, we'll see Johnson & Johnson. They're probably going to dump Moderna and move to Johnson & Johnson and then AstraZeneca and Novavax and the scam goes on and on. And by the way, here is the alarming piece out of this whole vaccine trial result from Moderna. Out of their entire trial, they had about 95 patients that ended up being affected with COVID-19. They're saying that 90 patients out of 95 were given placebo. Meanwhile, only five patients of those who got infected happened to be injected with the Moderna vaccine. But what does that mean? It means that if you take the Moderna vaccine, the likelihood from this very small study that you will be much safer to protect yourself and fight against COVID-19 than without it. The problem is that five patients is a very small, small, tiny sample to celebrate these results and proceed with this particular vaccine. If we did have 10,000 patients got infected with COVID-19 and only 500 of them receive the Moderna vaccine, then that study will be more impactful and more trustworthy. And here we go, Dr. Fauci says, these are obviously very exciting results regarding Moderna's vaccine trials. Adding, we're talking about Fauci here, it is just as good as it gets. 94.5 is truly outstanding. Now, 
I did a video on my channel exposing Moderna and their very sketchy and scammy CEO Stefan Bensel. You can google that video on my channel and watch it and I compare Moderna with Theranos calling it the next Ford. And in that video I show you a clip where Stefan Bensel, the CEO of Moderna, says that he was at the beach having a nice cup of coffee in the morning, getting ready for breakfast, and he reads the Wall Street Journal and he hears about this mysterious disease over there in Wuhan, China. And what does he do? He calls Dr. Anthony Fauci. He has him on speed dial to discuss this particular virus and the vaccine, meaning that Fauci and Mr. Bensel had prior relationship. They've worked together before. Yes. All right. All right, so I read that you were sitting in a beach in France and you read about this problem in China and all of a sudden you said, this is something I need to work on. Is that more or less fair or accurate? Yes, I was not on the beach because it was early January, but I was by the sea, yes. Okay. So I was having breakfast. I was reading like every morning the Wall Street Journal on my iPad and I saw this article in the first days of January about this new respiratory disease in China. And because... I've been working in infectious disease for 25 years, all my life. And because we have been partnering with NIAID, the division of NIH that Dr. Tony Fauci is leading, I basically sent an email to the NIAID team and say, do you know what this is? Is it even a bacteria or a virus? We didn't know at the time. And every day we learned more about it. And around January 10, the, the sequence of a new coronavirus was put online. And from that point on, we decided to just raise this virus and get into the clinic with a vaccine against it. I'm not accusing Fauci of any favoritism toward Moderna, but it is certainly notable that Moderna received a lot of favoritism from this administration, specifically receiving billions of dollars from the quote-unquote Operation Warp Speed. The head of Operation Warp Speed is Dr. Monsif Slawi who I also expose in that video. Monsif Slawi happens to be a board member in Moderna. Meanwhile, he's allocating billions of dollars to all of these pharmaceutical companies in which he owns stocks. Is this corruption or what? And Dr. Monsif Slawi says, oh, this is his retirement and there is no conflict of interest, yada, yada, yada. We'll see if the public trusts this garbage once all the information comes to light. And by the way, here we go. Moderna CEO Stefan Bensel net worth jumped by over 170 million on Monday. And we do know that Moderna executives have been dumping stocks like there is no tomorrow ever since they've received funding from Operation Warp speed and you can see it is not just the ceo it is the chief medical officer it is the cfo directors presidents of the company they've all been dumping massive and massive amount of stocks becoming richer in the process and here is the whole story with this moderna vaccine and i published this during my expose video against stefan bensel which you can find in my channel. But I will show you the video so you can judge for yourself. And this is not me saying or promoting any conspiracy theories. This is the opinion of Stanford doctors who characterize the Moderna vaccine and any mRNA treatment as the Snapchat effect. Meaning that the treatment will be effective for a little while, but then the antibodies disappear and you will need further injections more and more to maintain the antibodies. The idea is to teach our immune systems to take out the coronavirus um, before the virus takes over our body. There are dozens of efforts underway to make a vaccine against SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. A handful are using traditional methods, which use killed or weakened versions of all or part of the virus to get our immune system ready to fight. But some are trying a radically new approach. There's a new game in town that allows for even faster turnaround in developing and testing and then deploying vaccines, and it's called an RNA vaccine. 
RNA, which is a kind of ancient cousin of DNA. RNA molecules are the scripts that viruses use and that our human bodies also use to make proteins. The coronavirus's RNA codes for at least 24 proteins, including its spike protein, which covers the exterior. It's the protein that makes the coronaviruses have the crown appearance that they're named after. SARS-CoV-2 uses this protein to bind to and enter our cells, where it then injects its RNA, hijacking those cells to make lots more virus. It's almost like a skeleton key for a lock, opening a portal within human cells that the virus can slip in. So if you can block that process, if you can neutralize the virus before it enters the cell, that will probably be the Achilles heel that we need to target. We can tell our body, hey, if you see anything with that kind of a skeleton key shape, then just destroy it. This is where an RNA vaccine comes in, which becomes possible when you have the virus's genetic sequence and you know which genes code for which proteins. So the concept of an RNA vaccine is, let's inject the RNA molecule that encodes for the spike protein. It's making your cell do the work of creating this viral protein that is going to be recognized by your immune system and trigger um, the development of these antibodies. Our bodies won't make a full-fledged infectious virus, they'll just make a little piece and then learn to recognize it and then get ready to destroy the virus if it then later comes and invades us. The advantage of the RNA vaccine is that it can be produced within a matter of days. So these types of vaccines are much faster to generate. Much faster than it takes, for example, to even prepare a flu shot for the seasonal flu strain. But on the other hand, it's a relatively new, unproven technology. And there's still no example of an RNA vaccine that's been deployed worldwide in the way that we need for the coronavirus. There's the possibility for unforeseen adverse effects. So this is all new territory, whether it would elicit protective immune response against this virus, is just unknown right now. In addition, RNA molecules have a weakness. Here's the dirty secret. They are ephemeral. They're like the Snapchat of molecules. Our bodies make an RNA script and destroy it a few minutes later once they've used it to, to, as a little temporary instruction manual to make proteins. And so here's the issue. If we make a bunch of these RNA vaccines and keep them in the fridge, if you wait a couple of days, they're no longer good vaccines. Their expiration date is like a couple of days after you make them. And they have to be kept at a temperature of minus 80 degrees Celsius, which is super cold. This is a big deal breaker. We'll have to find a way to stabilize the RNA so their refrigerator is safe. And no one has quite figured out how to do that. And that is actually the problem that I'm involved in. I know we've celebrated the news about the vaccine today, but these questions will be asked and we will reevaluate whether our vaccine optimism is in place or not. And here is another piece of news from Jim Cramer of CNBC. And he says that he has never seen such resilient stock buyers, quote unquote, they don't seem to want to sell. And there is a new young crop of buyers who do not sell on the news, CNBC's Jim Cramer said on Monday. Jim Cramer, of course, talking about the Robin Hoodiets, who believe that stocks only go up and there are no red days. And if there are red days, there are opportunity to buy. And valuations, fundamentals don't matter. Buy first, ask questions later. Matter of fact, don't ask questions. Just buy, buy, buy. This is the mentality of the Robin Hooded generation of investors. But it is not new, because I don't know if uh, Jim Cramer was a toddler back in 1999, because we've seen the same attitude back then that we're seeing today. And we've also seen it during the 80s, specifically 86 and 87. I don't know where Jim Cramer was. He was probably doing a lot of blow with Larry Kudlow back in the good old days. So Jim Cramer probably has that part of his memory completely erased. But perhaps the Robin Hoodies have a point here because the Federal Reserve's Vice President Clarida said today, quote unquote, we are buying 80 billion of treasuries a month, which is an insane number. And the flow of blow continues from the Fed to the market. Because remember, the market is a cocaine addict and without 
cocaine, a.k.a. fiscal and monetary stimulus, the market will suffer a withdrawal. And now, let's move on to the heat map analysis. And right away, you see the picture is green across the board with several notable exceptions. So let's go through them. Big gains in the tech sector, specifically in semiconductor names, they continue to outperform the rest of technology names. Notably here, Taiwan closing above 6%, outperforming the entire semiconductor industry. More gains for Cisco, LAM Research, IBM, the old school tech, but we do see declines for Adobe, ServiceNow, the high flyers, and we see Team also down about 1.7%. The big boxes of Microsoft and Apple closing in the green, but the action was pretty much muted throughout the day. Apple got a last minute bump during the last hour of the day. Moving on to communication services, muted action for the big boxes of Facebook and Google. But we do see massive gains for Disney up over 4.5%. And we see more pain for Zoom. Zoom down another 1%. It was down over 3% in the morning, but it managed to close down 1.10%. More declines for Spotify and Snapchat, all the trades that benefited from the stay-at-home environment. What about consumer cyclicals? Amazon muted today, and we see more pain for Alibaba. And now we see other Chinese names joining the pain. JD down over 7%. Meanwhile, big day for General Motors. Honda, Honda was up big today. Ford, restaurants, apparel retail, whether it's Lululemon or TJ Maxx, or raw stores all closing in the green. Today, we didn't see as much discrimination against the stay-at-home names, just like we saw last Monday. Today, only the very hot, hot, hot names, such as Zoom, were faded, but we saw a more inclusive rally this time around. We do see cruises, big day for cruises, Big day for casinos and hotels, Marriott. And when we move on to consumer defensives, again, we do see beer, tobacco, liquor, Cisco, Tyson. These are the most important names for the reopening trade, all gaining massive gains for the day. What about REITs? I don't know if you've seen the action in Simon Properties today. All the REITs that are related to the reopening trade, whether it's malls or any shopping centers, were up significantly today. Mixed picture here for utilities, but we see big gains for American Waters, AWK. The momentum continues in this name. What about materials? Moving down a little. Gold miners, muted. Some names closing in the red, but we do see copper. Big day for copper and another day of massive gains for FCX. Freeport McMoran. What's going on with energy? The outperformer of the day. Check out Chevron. Up over 7%. Right after I sold it, by the way. I sold my entire stake in Chevron on Friday. And now it is up 7%. Will the momentum continue here for Chevron? Maybe. Now that I'm out, the curse is over. But we'll see. Exxon over 5% today. And you see massive gains for Kinder Morgan and a lot of oil and gas exploration names. What's going on with industrials? Again, the difference between this Monday and last Monday that we're not seeing UPS and FedEx being punished. They're actually joining the party. And you see UPX, FedEx all closing in the green, but names like Emerson, Triple M, General Electric, Boeing, Raytheon, all closing in the green. The most important action here is for healthcare. Big gain for Moderna, of course, but we see the Moderna's gains come at the expense of Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Eli Lilly, and even to a certain extent, Merck. All of these names closed in the red today. What remains an outperformer? The name that I picked for you, Johnson & Johnson, continues to gain even today. And another big day for CVS. And I issued a tweet telling you that since October 30th, which was just a couple of weeks ago, CVS is up almost 40%. It is unbelievable. But this is how strong the momentum in the market right now. We see another name, ABT Abbott Laboratories. Remember when this name was down big last Monday, I told you to buy it because it was a knee-jerk reaction and it is a dip to buy. And ever since ABT 
Abbott Laboratories been posting gains day after day. And the last sector recovering here, financials. Big day across the board for banks, but specifically regional banks. You see Berkshire is also up about 2.5%. Muted day for MasterCard. Remember, I said the MasterCard is the weakest name in the credits services. Meanwhile, you see AXP, American Express, the comeback kid, with another massive day of over 3% gains let's get more specific here and cover the rotation trade and right away you see an outperformance by the reopening stocks aka the comeback stocks meanwhile we don't see massive declines here just like we saw last week for the stay-at-home stocks aka the garbage stocks they used to be called momentum now we call them garbage because people and traders are migrating from these names to the reopening stocks the notable action here for momentum and i still call the momentum to be nice zoom down one percent but we see peloton is up one percent so again zoom being punished here singled out meanwhile DocuSign, which is supposed to be down along with peloton are actually closing in the green everything else is muted with exception to papa john's down another two percent we will probably remove papa john's tomorrow and replace it with fedex Papa John's used to be a momentum name during the first phase of the lockdowns. We saw the name rallying significantly, but ever since it dropped from the top over 20% and it's not getting any momentum back. So we will replace it with FedEx by tomorrow. What do we see across the aisle? Where are the biggest gains? Chevron over 7%. We talked about that. Marriott, Cisco, Alta Beauty, but notably Six Flags a little lagging here. You would think that Six Flags would close a little higher upon the vaccine news. And by the way, American Express, I apologize for the error here. American Express closed over 3% today. Disney, massive day for Disney, up 4 and a half percent and the question here are we gonna see the same playbook from last week being repeated meaning are we gonna see the rotation of the rotation of the rotation once again i think we will i think these tick names and momentum names will start to rally and catch a bid once again doesn't mean that traders were totally abandoned the reopening stocks but we will see new blood joining the market and seeing some of these dips in zoom peloton DocuSign, etc as an opportunity to buy until of course we hit the reversal point in the market we're not there yet we hit the reversal point and we'll talk a little more about that during the conclusion of the video everything will be sold together with that being said let's cover some charts and see what's going on starting with the spy 15 minutes chart again we had the very tough level of 359 which was a very strong resistance and i told you you will need a gap higher again in the morning to defeat this resistance level what do you know another day another overnight pump and we gap higher in the morning however retail traders are not buying it the action is muted the volume is very low and some of them start actually to sell what do you know the mysterious entity comes back again at the end of the day and pushes that one last pump that they've been doing day after day it is the same playbook it is the same manual pump overnight create a gap higher during the trading hours and if retail traders don't pick up and we see a surge of volume in buying then do a last minute pump before the closing bell and gap the market higher again the next day lather rinse repeat all in hope that at some point retail traders will pick the momentum and dive in buying the market in big volume and then they end up being bag holders we haven't seen that yet keyword yet moving on to the daily chart of the spy and remember this this was the bear case that we are seeing a bear flag formation well after the action today the bear flag goes down the toilet and here is what we have the bulls case win and now we are eyeing all times highs at the level of 364.40 now the bears might have something to hang their hats on on a hope for a double top once we reach 364.40 and reverse lower However, right now, the momentum and the control is in the hands of 
the bulls. Moving on to the cues. You see today's activities. I said that the level of 292 will be very difficult to break above. And certainly the cues tried to do that early in the morning. They failed. They crawled back below 292 and they went back and forth, back and forth. And here comes the last minute pump to the rescue, pushing the cues to close above 292. What do we have? The next target for resistance, 295.30. Moving on to a daily chart of the cues. We can look at the chart and say that the bear flag is still alive for the cues, unlike the spy. However, the action today tells me that there is a lot of momentum in the market that would push the spy and the cues equally, even if the cues continue to lag. And again, my message for the shorts and bears, hold your horses. Do not fire yet because, as we will discuss in the conclusion, we could see a melt up scenario coming up here. So wait till you get the sign and the signal to short and then initiate that short. Right now, doing it will come with a lot of risk. We don't have any notable activities for gold or the dollar index, so we will skip these two charts and we will move on right away to the TLT. Any notable action for the TLT today? No. We saw that one gap higher on Thursday last week and the TLT pretty much trading flat and we are waiting for the TLT to give it another gap higher and reverse in more solid and bold fashion. What do I mean by that? I want to see the TLT marching higher over the level of 162. If we do see this kind of appetite to buying long-term bonds, that will mean that we are inching closer and closer to our reversal in the stock market. And by the way, what's going on with the TNX, the 10 years treasury yield? Remember we saw the reversal, we got very close to the very important psychological level of 1%. Remember, we do have a very important psychological level for the Dow, 30,000. We have another one that is very important for treasury yields. That is the 1% for the 10 years treasury note. We see that the TNX did a mini reversal higher today, closing in the green, back at 91 basis points. So will the TNX give it another shot and try to reach 1%? I do think so. And again, if you see the TNX climbing higher, reaching closer to 1% and the VIX continues to collapse, that is your indication that we are ready for a melt up scenario in the stock market. And speaking of the VIX, Let's cover the chart of the VIX from a daily perspective. What do we see? Today the VIX managed to climb all the way, peak its head above the neutral line and actually trading in the green for a little bit. But then we saw the last hour pump and the VIX continued to collapse and collapse, closing in the red and the VIX is not looking very good right here. The potential for a reversal higher is still on the table. We're not totally calling the VIX dead yet. However, it has to happen very soon. It has to happen as soon as tomorrow, Wednesday at the latest. Otherwise, we will see the melt up scenario in the stock market. And we will see the VIX collapsing all the way back to its natural habitat between 12 and 15. And here is the chart of Apple, by the way. Apple managed to recapture the resistance now support level of 120 closing slightly above it. Remember, we will review all of these conditions for the reversal in the conclusion, but Apple reaching 120, getting rejected and reversing from it in a harsh reversal is one of the conditions for the reversal in the indices. We're not seeing that. We're seeing the VIX down. We're seeing the TLT muted, not moving higher. We're seeing Apple recapturing 120 once again. What does that tell you? It tells you that the momentum and the control of the market is on the hands of the bulls. Here is another chart for Tesla. Tesla been muted, trading sideways, slightly down, lagging the market for days and weeks now. Tesla, that used to be one of the hottest names in the stock market, has been acting as one of the most boring names in the entire stock market. While we see the party in the action in NEO and Xpeng, Lee Motors, even old school automotive companies, General Motors, Honda Motors, Ford, Toyota, all outperforming Tesla for months now. However, 
after the bell, we do have another piece of news for Tesla bulls to hang their hats on. Remember, these morons trade based on stock splits and rumors, etc. The inclusion in the SPY changes the game for Tesla. We were bearish in Tesla. Now we're shifting to being neutral. Why? Because Tesla needs new blood to move higher. Tesla stock is a pyramid scheme. They need more new investors to pile more money, new money into the name to ride higher because there are no shorts to cover anymore. And we've been seeing that new blood actually been attracted to NEO and XPeng and other names. And therefore, Tesla been muted all along. But now we do have another catalyst to bring back all of that new blood that has been piling money on NEO, XPeng, etc. back to buying Tesla. So what do we see here from a technical perspective? We do have the next resistance level of 425. We will probably, based on the action during the after hours, we will gap above the 425 resistance line. So where is the next one? It is the 452. That would be a solid resistance. And you see that Tesla managed to go all the way over there, surpassing 452 after hours, but reversing and trading lower last time I checked. So 452 is the line to beat for Tesla tomorrow. Now bear in mind, I'm saying I'm neutral on Tesla now, not bullish either. And the reason is, it will really depend on the psychology of Tesla holders tomorrow. What are they gonna do? We know that the new blood will migrate to a certain degree and buy Tesla tomorrow. But the power in the direction of Tesla stock is in the hands of holders. So what are they gonna do tomorrow? We've seen the grass is greener on the other side. Retail names, cruises, airlines, casinos, restaurants, you name it. All of these reopening names been posting massive gains on daily basis. If we do see some Tesla holders say that, hey, the pop tomorrow is an opportunity to sell and raise some cash so we can invest in some of these reopening hot names, then you could see Tesla popping higher and then reversing a lot of the gains that you will see in the morning. And you will see a one-time pop and a fade out because a lot of the holders decided to sell, to raise some cash, to put it to work in the hot reopening trade. We don't know what they're going to do yet, but I'm just laying it out there. You have to be aware about the psychology of market participants. The charts are important, the technicals are important, but the psychology is even more important than technicals and other factors. And now let's move on to conclude this video. Remember the three conditions I gave you to spot the market reversal. And it is done by design. I'm picking the TLT, Apple and the VIX as these conditions because I don't wanna see a reversal in one side of the market, say it is the momentum trade or the reopening trade and doing the yo-yo game shifting from one side to the other. That is not the reversal I'm looking for. I'm looking for a wholesome reversal in the market in which the NASDAQ, the Dow, the SPY, the IWM will all collapse closing in the red. And this is why I do have the VIX as a representative for the SPY. If the VIX recaptures the very pivotal and important level of 24.8, closing above it significantly with a lot of momentum, that means that we are seeing significant weakness in the SPY and a rush to buy protection. Now, we want to see the same thing in the NASDAQ. Who is the king of the NASDAQ? That is Apple. Apple has a very pivotal and important level of 120. It is a very important level from a technical standpoint. And this is why we're saying, if we do see a harsh rejection for Apple, from the level of 120 and we see the name reversing lower breaking the 117 support going all the way to 115 and we see a surge in volume in selling apple that would be your sign and your signal that the nasdaq is weakening and ready for a reversal the nasdaq cannot continue to march without apple as simple as that and the last condition is a reversal higher in the TLT, preferably for the TLT to gap higher and march all the way to the level of 162. It is not a magic number for the TLT, we're just looking for a reversal higher. And the reason here is we want to see 
certain market participants taking profits from the stock market and moving that cash to the safety of bonds, even if it is temporary. That would be your sign and signal that a lot of smart money is migrating from stocks to bonds, leaving dummy retails to hold the bag. So again, these are the three conditions and they were done by design and precision. That if all of them are met, and you saw a little taste of that last Thursday. You saw the Nasdaq down, Dow Jones down, the SPY down, IWM down. This is what I'm looking for. But I'm not looking for a one-day action. I'm looking for a sustainable movement in the direction of these three conditions. So my message for the shorts and bears, and a lot of you messaged me today. Oh, I shorted the Qs. Oh, I bought the VIX. Oh, I shorted Apple. Oh, I shorted Cruises. It doesn't matter what it is. And now I'm holding the bag. My message for you, please wait. Do not rush. Wait for the signal. Wait till you see at least some of these conditions that I'm giving you starting to form. But right now, all of what you're doing is taking a wild shot, trying to play the move ahead of the market. You could get rewarded, say if we reverse tomorrow, and we have the crash tomorrow, the likelihood is that's not going to happen. So you're better off doing the following. And I will show you what I did, what I'm doing actually. This is a tweet I released on Friday, showing you that I'm liquidating entire positions in my portfolio, taking profits off the table. And you see, here is my portfolio updated. All the names that are marked by an X, these are positions that I sold and I took profits off the table. And again, if I see American Express up another 4 or 5% tomorrow, international paper, another 4 or 5%, same story goes with Marriott and Alta, I will take these positions off the table and book the profits. The goal here is the following. Use these pumps in the market to raise as much cash as you can. And if you can do that, if you are bounded by, say, tax reasons that you cannot sell and do the following the vix collapse to the lowest levels in months so buy some puts buy some protection in the names that you own in your portfolio they're cheap and they might become handy in the next following days and weeks so buy protections on the names that you own at the same time sell out of the money call options they're elevated the premiums are high so you might want to use the opportunity to raise some cash on the names that you already have on your portfolio say you have 100 shares of disney sell out of the money calls to raise cash and if these calls are exercised the worst case scenario is you will sell your position at a profit you couldn't lose either way and the last type of market participants say you don't own stocks you're just a trader you trade options i know a lot of you fall into that category here is what you do do not short until you get the signal and if you must buy puts buy them longer dated by january by february they're still cheap these puts as we see the decline of the vix the premiums for puts become less elevated and a lot cheaper so you might want to start shorting positions longer dated but also at the same time you want to participate on the upside so for example today the theme was the reopening names the likelihood is they're going to play the yo-yo game. Tomorrow, they'll switch to the growth momentum names. So today was your opportunity to buy calls on the Zooms of the world, the Facebook, etc. But again, remember, do not gamble a lot. Keep it to 10 or 15% of your overall portfolio value if you are a derivatives trader only. Meaning, de-risk. Raise as much cash as you can because we do have an epic short trade coming in the market you don't want to miss that one but you also don't want to fire prematurely and get caught in the melt up and lose your money wait for the signal raise as much cash as you can once the signal is there and we're ready to reverse in the market you fire that cash you put it to work and you will make significant amount of profits during the upcoming correction and it is upcoming because all of the gapping that we've done overnight creates air pockets that will get hit at some point and you will see the indices flushing down significantly. Until that day, play the game in front of you, play the market that's been handed to you 
every day. And by the way, here's the last bit of information I want to present to you. You see corporate insiders selling into the rally. They're not buying the spot. And you see, I'm doing the same. I'm actually selling, taking profits. And the big guns, the corporate insiders doing the same thing because they know that this pump is unsustainable and we will hit a reversal very soon. We don't know what the date is yet for that reversal. In the meantime, the dance will continue, the party will continue in the market, and we will see a melt-up scenario. So if you must participate, if you have FOMO, I told you how to do it via call options, but limit your risk. Other than that, you raise cash, wait in the sidelines for the upcoming epic short. And speaking of the epic short, it was the last bit that I want to cover for this gentleman named Bill Ackman. And this guy's a snake. I don't like him at all. Remember back before the COVID-19 crash in February, he made a very interesting bet. He bet 27 million bucks buying puts on the market, way out of the money. That 27 million turned into over 2 billion after the crash. Now remember, this snake, uh, Bill Ackman, has a lot of politicians' friends. He donates a lot of money for senators, Congress people, etc. And we know that the senators who went into the classified briefing on February before the market crash fed him information. And instead of buying 1 billion bucks shorting the market and attracting the attention of the SEC, he decided to do it cleverly by buying way out of the money and only 27 million bucks worth of bet. So if anybody questions him, he will say, oh, that's standard practice. This is regular for hedge funds to buy out of the money short options in the market. And also remember, during the bottom in March, Bill Ackman came over at CNBC and he was crying, oh, it's the end of the world and Hilton is going to go bankrupt. And meanwhile, this snake was actually buying stocks. So whatever he's doing, he has insider information. This son of a bitch knows something. And what he's doing now is he's trying to repeat his performance from back in February, placing a massive short bet against the the market and Bill Ackman says oh I'm, I'm just doing it as standard practice I'm hoping that I will lose money in this short bullshit he knows something he knows what's gonna happen but we all know what's gonna happen it is inevitable and this is another sign of confirmation that the market rally is not sustainable and we have another epic shorting opportunity coming up very soon and the take here after two promising quote-unquote promising vaccine headlines two weeks in a row. What are the probability that we're going to get a large stimulus now? The likelihood is the probability went lower today. You have to remember the stock market is a cocaine addict. This is the most important thing for the stock market. Cocaine, aka fiscal and monetary stimulus. Wait till the market wakes up from this whole vaccine optimism party and realizes that now Mitch McConnell will fight a large stimulus aggressively and he will hand us breadcrumbs as the new stimulus. How do you think the market will handle this one? If you found the information presented in this video helpful, please subscribe, press the like button, the notification button and follow me on social media.